invite you to stand as you're able and join me in a call to worship. Equal with God, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Found as a man, Jesus is Lord. Death on the cross, Jesus is Lord. God raised him up, Jesus is Lord. Give him the name, Jesus is Lord. Every knee bow, Jesus is Lord. All tongues confess, Jesus is Lord. And our praise hymn this morning is Blessed Assurance, number 341 in your blue hymnal. now in our love and in our hope, let us confess our sins together. Lord Jesus Christ, when our words and actions reflect a reluctance to confess you publicly as the Lord of our lives, forgive us. When we fear that humbling ourselves would be seen by others as weakness, 
some kind of defect in our character, forgive us. When we have betrayed your love for us through our lack of love for you and for others and for ourselves, forgive us. When we find ourselves glossing over the events of your passion holidays and have fun, forgive us. Lord Jesus Christ, fix your mind in us. Remake us in your likeness. Empty us of all that hinders us from following you to where pain and suffering, exploitation, and injustice exist. Gracious and loving God, empower us with your Holy Spirit so that our lives continually glorify you and our tongues forever confess Jesus as Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself himself taking the form of a slave and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Thanks be to God. Amen.
probably kidding me. We are reading um, from Philippians this, mor this morning. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to, gl to the glory of God the Father. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can we trust God? Really trust God? The message this uh, Palm Sunday is one of the promise of uh, was one of promise and absolute faith. It shows the importance of believing God prior to seeing the final results. Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday was foretold long before it happened. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9 9. So what does this have to do with our 21st century circumstances today? If our world was ever in need of someone or something we can trust, it's now. As I look around at our current events, a contentious upcoming election, war, genocide, I'm struck more than ever with the truth that we can trust in only one thing, God. The Lord's promise to love us unconditionally, to never leave us nor forsake us, and to do what we cannot do for ourselves gives us a firm foundation that we can stand on. God provides the encouragement and strength to turn our weakness into strength. The message of Palm Sunday points to a Savior who is willing and able to save us from any catastrophe. And God shows us how to best conduct ourselves when emotions run high. By highlighting Matthew 21, 1 through 11, Luke 19, 28 through 40, and John 12, 12 through 19, we capture the panoramic view of the Palm Sunday story. It sets the scene for the prophecy fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. As directed by Jesus, two of the disciples went into a village and untied a donkey and its colt, then brought them to Christ for him to ride. Nearing Jerusalem, word spreads about Jesus' approach. I imagine the whispers started at first. Did you hear? He's coming. The one they call Messiah, our King. We must welcome him as, as he deserves. Soon the whispers transformed in frenzied shouts, prompting young boys to scurry up palm trunks and cut enough fronds for the growing crowd. Hurry, we must prepare for his arrival, voices from the ground cry out. A messenger arrives, breathless, grasping. He is close, maybe a mile away. Armloads of palm fronds pass quickly among men, women, and children who line the edges of the road, waiting in anticipation. Then someone shouted, There! I see him! The king approaches. When Jesus was close enough for the people to see the gentle and loving smile he wore, they began to wave the palms, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! We can learn much from this monumental moment. First, even in the midst of voices competing with each other to be heard, Christ provided a calming influence. He did not scream over the crowds or tell others to be quiet so he could be heard and to speak. In my mind's eye, I can see his gentle spirit exuding love as he looked on each person individually, accepting them where they were as they were. And that's something he does for us today. Jesus showed he was approachable and available. It's encouraging to know that Jesus is never too busy, distracted, or overwhelmed for us to bring our concerns to him. 
This is important for us to remember during moments of crisis, whether personal or global. Jesus also just demonstrated humility. He did not seat himself above the people, but instead on a lowly donkey, at level where he could see them eye to eye. He felt reachable. When we look for Christ today, we can still find him reachable. Christ's choice of a donkey to ride on was a symbol of peace. In his time on earth, those who arrived on a donkey were considered to come with peaceful intent. Isn't it refreshing to know that when the world is frantic, we can count on the peace of Christ to calm and comfort us? The shouts of Hosanna came from the Hebrew meaning save, rescue, savior. In faith, people trusted Jesus to save them on Palm Sunday, and though they didn't know how, they trusted that he would. Our faith should be grounded in the knowledge that Jesus still saves today. The palm branch represented victory, and though the people lining the road were not aware of their full significance, the waving palms symbolized the final victory Jesus would soon fulfill over death. We, too, can know that even in death we win. As Jesus said to Martha in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. This powerful reminder tells us we have nothing to fear from any virus, from any war, any other concern, when we know our ultimate destination is to live with Christ. We can also find comfort in knowing that God is not caught off guard by any of this. He is not caught off guard by human nature being at its worst, or natural disaster, or disease, or any other circumstance. Centuries before Jesus rode the donkey on Palm Sunday, Jesus, God revealed the coming event, leading the prophet to pen Zechariah 9.9. Though it may take longer than we would like or anticipate, and our own faith may waver, God's reliability is as refreshing as the cool air spurred by those palm fronds. Palm Sunday carries Christ toward the ultimate sacrifice of his life on the cross, where by his sacrifice we are healed. Its central message is that God sees us and loves what God sees. The only requirement from us is that we welcome God and God's peace and exercise faith in God's ultimate healing, whether on earth or in heaven. Are we exemplifying the Palm Sunday promise to a watching world? Not only can we have confidence because of Christ's provision for our lives, but we can emulate his characteristics, especially in a crisis to influence others for the good. People are watching. People are listening. And more than ever, they need to see our strong spiritual faith. So let us wave our palm fronds for all to see. Will you stand as you're able and join me in a statement of faith? We believe in the God of Good Friday, who sent us Jesus of Nazareth to be wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. While some seek more knowledge and others look for signs and omens, we place our trust in Christ crucified. We believe that those who hoard their life will lose it. Yet those who lose their life for Christ's sake will find it. We believe that Christ crucified is the power of God and the saving wisdom of God. We believe this foolishness of God is wiser than earthly knowledge, and the weakness of God is stronger than human arrogance. This we dare to believe because we have seen the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ.
God, of our heart, God, our hearts overflow with thanksgiving to you. You are infinitely good to us. Your creation is so magnificent, and it gives us pleasure and supplies our needs for food and water and light and warmth. And you have supplied salvation through Jesus. You supply our spiritual needs through communion with you, through our spiritual armor, our spiritual gifts, and your indwelling Holy Spirit. Accept these ties and offerings as we give you today as a living offering for your eventual blessings. Amen. You may be seated. When we come to the time of our service where we share with one another our joys and concerns. Do we have joys to lift up this morning? No joys this morning? Yes. Okay, our prayer walk total is 1,700.6 miles. All right, that means we only have 200 miles to go, give or take. All right. Uh, uh, thanks to the hostlers, I used all their walking in Portugal. <laughs> got about a little over 200 more 200 more miles to walk and we will have made it to uh, Jerusalem so we're 17 miles closer because I had 17 this week okay all right <laughs> all right I got two for you from Delphi's too okay perfect um, any other joys yes sir You got one? Linda? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's been all right. She, she still paralyzed partially on her leg. She can't walk. And, uh, I think mean, that's the procedure, but she's bad enough. She, I think she's doing okay. okay. Is she in the hospital still or did they move over to rehab? Is she, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she is. And she's still in the hospital there. Okay. Her son's real helpful to her. And she likes to do Yes. Yeah, I plan on going this week. The last two weeks were just kind of crazy busy. So we'll keep keep them in our prayers, Linda and Louie. Anyone else? Any other concerns? Yes. Okay, little too. Yeah. Did you have one, Louie? her name? Tinley. Tinley. Tinley fell off of the swing and got a concussion. So we'll keep Tinley in our prayers too. Anything else? All right, then I invite you to join me in an attitude of prayer. Surely you felt enormous pain, sharp as a centurion's sword, when your friends betrayed you. Not just the one that scripture foretold with his fatal kiss, but the one you called your rock, who swore he didn't know you. What human couldn't feel hurt at that? We can identify, albeit feebly, with your anguish in the garden, asking that you do not have to do what your father was asking, demanding that you do. And then you seem to demonstrate that you were mortal, dying at the executioner's hands, just like a regular person, 
a criminal at that, convicted on trumped up charges by an indifferent judge. We wonder if you knew how the story would end as we do. Our knowledge of Easter is what allows us to bear observing Holy Week year after year. Easter is maybe the time when Jesus, the human, is also most holy God, capable of resurrection from the dead and somehow mysteriously redeeming us in the process. But to get to that point, we have to go through the trials and frailties of your flesh, just as we do our own every day. God, as we move through this week, give us the gifts of concentration, of focus, and of empathy, as we seek to determine where your astonishing story which is at once so familiar and yet so incredible, fits within our own narratives. We believe wholeheartedly that your passion and death have significance beyond our comprehension. Allow us to be touched and awestruck by the holy events of this week and to claim them once again for our own lives. As we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, our closing hymn this morning is Freely, Freely, number 517 in your brown hymnals or on the screen. <laughs> Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.